Hello friends, this is Rob Room 111 and in this episode I'm going to show you how to develop 110 film at home. Okay, this will not be A to Z as far as like showing you, you know, running the hot water and all that other stuff because there are so many videos out there on there currently. So what I'm going to do is instead of replicating a bunch of stuff that's already out there, I'm going to show you just the stuff that's specific to 110, okay? And then all the other stuff will be applicable just as developing 35 and so forth. Okay, so let's start. Uh, okay, so we see I'm on my last image here. This is an actual roll I took today with my Instamatic 20. So you can see here the frame counter is in 24. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to advance until I count the 6th X. When I count the 6th X, 6th X, ooh, that's kind of hard to say. I'm going to stop, okay? So let's, let's do it now. If I can see here, holy mackerel, I can't even see. Okay, let's go. Still on 24, okay. Let me see, let me get back in focus here. Very hard to see. One, two, I think that's two. I'm using manual focus here and I'm seeing all these illuminated dots, that sh so it's very hard for me to see. Three, four, five, Six. There's my sixth. That looks like it's my last one. Again, I apologize. I'm having difficulty seeing through the LCD here, the screen on the back of my camera. So I think that's six, but that's close enough. Trust me, this is very close. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the back of the camera. I'm going to remove the cassette. Okay. Now I should be at the spot just about where I need to be. Okay, so I'm pretty close. I'm going to turn it there we go perfect see I was absolutely perfect with the so if you go to the, about the sixth X that's exactly where you need to be to have the film end up like this so what I'm going to do now and I got this from a, a gentleman named Nano Burger I want to give proper attribution when it's necessary right I don't want to plagiarize anybody so this goes back to about 2003 this gentleman he posted it online through like an internet bulletin board. So this goes back to 2003, but I'm just, I'm basically stealing his, borrowing his idea here. So you get the dental pick under the backing. So this ended up in the right spot, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the dental pick under the, the, the backing paper. So how it works, just let me review very quickly with you. When this cassette of film is, is new, it's fresh, all the film is contained on the right side. As you place it in the camera, it'll be on the right side. As you take, as you take pictures, the film starts to coil here in the take-up spool. So this is where the film is coiled now after the film is exhausted. So when you, my point is, when you put the dental pick Make it focus again. When you put the dental pick underneath, you want to pull from the right spool, okay? All right. So let me get this out. Pull it out. There we go. So this is now in a, in a position. Let me get focus again. This is now in a position where I can go inside the changing bag, and I'm going to remove this inside of a dark bag. I can't do it now, or I'll ruin the film. So you go inside, did you please see my video. I have a video called Changing Bag Essentials. Please consult that video and it's the same thing. So what I'm going to do is inside the changing bag, I'm going to pull this. I'm going to pull it out very, very carefully because what you don't want to do is scratch the film on this edge, right? Because if you scratch the film, you're going to put gouges in it and you're going to ruin your images. So very delicately remove the film and the backing paper inside the changing bag and now I'll show you how to spool it onto the reel. Okay. okay friends, so in this segment what I'm going to show you is how to load the film onto the reel. Okay, this is called a Yankee Clipper 2 tank and I got this online, I think B&H but uh, you can get it from different uh, establishments of course and I'll explain what this is later why I have this end marked as, as opposed to this end, okay? But for now what we're concentrating on is is loading it onto the reel. 
So you can see this is adjustable, but I never adjust this because this is kind of flimsy. If you can see this, that little, little piece of stainless in there, that clip, it's not really right. This is kind of, to be totally honest with you, I'm trying to be delicate, but it's kind of low quality. And I don't want to adjust this from 110 to 35 to 120, back and forth. That's my Patterson tank. The Patterson tank is much higher quality, and it's much more amenable to adjustments. This, when it comes when it comes in the mail, it's preset to 110, and I've never altered it. I just keep it as my 110 tank only, and then I use my Patterson 2 reel for both 35 and medium format 120 and 620. But this will stay. A 110 only configuration so I'll show you now how to load the film onto the reel so you'll see here that there's this is the load I call it the gate the loading gate if you can see there's like a little protrusion here and then you have to be careful right you have to line it up so the way you start now of course all this is occurring inside of a changing bag right I'm not really gonna do this in daylight in the real world or I would ruin my film so we're inside the changing bag in complete darkness. So what you want to do inside the bag is you have this inside the bag, the actual tank, and you have the lid. This is all inside your bag. So what you do is you have your film. This is just a, a demonstrator piece, right? It's ruined. This was a very, I bought an old camera off eBay from the 1970s and this film was it was ruined so it, it when I got it there were no images on it so that's why I'm using it as a demonstrator piece so the way you do it is you start putting it in the gate right and then you just hand feed it so this is going to be very very different from 35 millimeter in medium format it's this is far harder and you want to wear gloves because to load 110 properly it really takes a lot of hand manipulation and if you use your bare hands you're going to ruin the you're going to ruin the negative film because you're going to get thumbprints and your thumbprints and the oil from your fingers will be transferred onto the film and it's going to be ruined. So I can get away with doing 35 in medium format with my bare hands, but I can't with 110. It, these are just little cheap disposable gloves you can get from a drug store or from a retail store. This isn't some kind of high quality medical stuff. It's just very flimsy disposable gloves. Like if you're at home working with cleaning solutions and stuff these are just what you wear at home for doing you know miscellaneous chores around the house okay it doesn't have to be any kind of operating room type of medical equipment so I'm loading it onto the onto the reel okay it's still going in and it's almost making one revolution if you can see here it's almost made one complete revolution just by feeding by hand now it's stopped so this is always where it stops it stops in about the same place and it stops where this protrusion is here, okay? So you can hand feed almost one entire revolution just by hand, and then you can't do that any longer. So what I do is I take the film. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky, a little bit different from the Patterson reel. Because of the Patterson reel, it's very easy to ratchet the film on. With this, it's not, and I'll show you how to do it, okay? So re just remember, one finger, one hand is advancing, and your left hand is a, is a is a is a compression a little bit of compression so when you when you're back stroking the right side the film doesn't back out along with it so this finger is pressure so that this half of the reel turns without backing the film out okay so i'll show you how to do it so we're going to with our left thumb this is how it's different from the Patterson. With your left thumb, you keep pressure on the film here to prevent it from backing out, okay? And then with the right forefinger, you turn, you turn on. So I'm spooling on, and with the left thumb, I'm preventing it from backing out, okay? So I'll show you, okay? So I got my left thumb here, I'm holding it, and I'm turning back the ratchet, the right, the right half. Now, I let off pressure with my left thumb, and I apply pressure with my right forefinger. So there, I'm loading. See, I just loaded. Okay, now with pressure from the left thumb, I remove this pressure, put pressure with the left thumb, I'm ratcheting back, okay? And again, I, I just, I'm doing opposing, opposing movements here. So what I'm doing is slowly, slowly ratcheting the film onto the the reel okay so I just keep going thumb forefinger thumb forefinger I'm alternating pressure thumb forefinger thumb for left thumb right forefinger left thumb right forefinger left thumb 
right forefinger. Okay, and I just keep doing that. See, this film is badly damaged. That's why it's not wanting to cooperate. Cause, right, but if you have a regular fresh film, it's going to go on very easily. Oops. See, this is what I'm talking about. The film is damaged. So I'm just going to rip this out. If this was fresh film, I would never do that. But again, this, this film is very brittle and damaged. So there it is. Okay, so I've got now my 110 film is fully loaded onto the reel and it's ready to go in the tank. Okay, so now I just place the, the, the reel in the tank. Now the Patterson tank will make a very audible click. It'll go click and that's how you know you're light tight. With this Yankee Clipper, you won't get that very loud audible click as an audible confirmation. So what you do is you just you just tighten it, right? And you just try to make sure you're not cross-threaded. I do it a couple times just to make sure I'm good to go. I try to lift, right? It's not coming off, so I know I'm good. I'm light tight. This tank is now light tight. But now, this is another thing I wanted to get to, is that these are susceptible to some light leaks, a little bit of light leaks. So what I do is when I develop my film, I actually develop it in very, very low light. So all the, my apartment is almost completely dark, save for one little night light I have by my hot water, by the actual kitchen sink. There's a night light there, and that is my only operating light. That and the light from my smartphone, because I use a timer. I use the, like if you download a, an app where it's got a countdown timer, a stopwatch, an alarm clock, right? It's multifunctional. So the one that you want to use is the stopwatch feature, because you're using the stopwatch for your develop, right? I, your pre-warm, your development, and then your Blix, and then your stabilizer right so you want to use the stopwatch so that's about it so my point is you're getting light your working light is coming from a night light and your smartphone there should be no other lights on in the apartment and the reason I say that again the reason I went there with this is the Patterson tank is very light tight you can have regular lights on in your apartment or your house and it will not enter the Patterson tank this is not as high quality as that so your apartment or your house or wherever you're living wherever you're going to do the development it has to be almost dark to try to prevent light from entering this tank okay again a night light and just the operating light from your smartphone okay so the next thing is when it comes to um well i'll tell you what i'm going to actually save that for the oh let me just go on I'll go right on to the next segment here okay i just had to step out of frame for a second so when it comes to uh, operating levels of fluid, okay, so let me go back to this. So if when you take this off, you're going to notice here, I don't know if you can see it, this tank, the Patterson tank, or the Yankee Clipper tank, okay, these, right here, these are the drainage areas. One side is going to be larger than the other, okay? I don't know if you can see, I'm going to try to turn it, right? But what it is, is when you get your tank, your lid, look and see which one is the larger, okay? And then what I did is I took some label tape and I labeled it because this is the side I'm going to drain from when I actually do my, my, my uh, film development. So I'll show you what I do here. So when you use the Yankee Clipper, what I do is you, you have a graduated cylinder and you measure out 180 milliliters of fluid which is about somewhere about six ounces it takes the top of this tank the actual top of the reel is five ounces or approximately 150 milliliters of either development chemical right the developer or the blicks or so forth and so on so what I do and but it just barely covers the top and you really don't want that because if for some reason the, the thing were to get crooked or something you're going to have spots that the development chemical didn't hit. So what I do is I just add an extra ounce of, 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 of liquid into the tank. So instead of basically 150 milliliters, I use 180. Okay, and then I'm safe. It's only going to be a little bit more extra coverage, but it's going to be enough to protect you. So and this is what I'll show you what I do here. So here I've got it labeled. What I did is I took a graduated cylinder, measured a 180 milliliters and I poured it into this bottle and where the level where the level stopped I took this label and I put I affixed the label right to where the li the liquid 
right, rows to. So I know I don't have to use the graduated cylinder anymore. So when I transfer Blix and Developer, this is kind of shady, it got wet and it moved a little bit on me. But when I transfer, the, I know where to stop. I stop as soon as the liquid hits the bottom of this label, I know that's 180 milliliters, okay? And it's the same with my Developer. So that's how you do it. So then, you, when you uh, have it in your hot water, you're soaking this in the hot water. Only bring the hot water to this high. These are little 16-ounce uh, uh, brown uh, amber bottles, right? These are amber. And yeah, as I said, you, you soak it in the hot water up until like the same level. So there's only a little bit of hot water in your dish pan or whatever when you're trying to bring your chemicals up to temperature. Okay, and then the last part that's different from any other film development. Now, when you have 180 milliliters of fluid in this tank, and you've already identified which is your drainage side, as soon as you start to drain, it takes anywhere from about 18 to 19 seconds is the time. It takes 18 to 19 seconds to drain all the fluid, 180 milliliters. Okay, if you have 180 milliliters in the tank, as soon as you start to pour, even on the large side, it's about you know 18 to 20 seconds so let's say you're working with a fresh batch of c41 chemicals they're at 102 degrees fahrenheit and your development time is three and a half minutes so what i do i start pouring at 310 so right you know how you you got to do your this one doesn't have a lid you can't do this either there's there's a there's a lid and you just turn okay because this will leak it's not like the patterson thing so that's different too you just you just turn this every 15 seconds or 30 seconds just to get a little fresh chemicals on your film, right? Again, so I'm repeating myself. With the developer, let's say it's, it's 3 minutes, 30 seconds. It's fresh. You, you just made a fresh batch of chemicals. You start, you start pouring at 310, okay? But it takes 20 seconds. By the time it drains, you're at about 330 and you're still safe. Trust me, please. I've done this a million times. You're going to be good. But there's still enough development chemical on the film where it's developing the film. Okay, I use a fresh water rinse. I'm going to deviate a little bit here. It's not really part of the 110 process, but I'm going to cover it. I always use a, a fresh water rinse between my development and Blix, and here's why. The instructions that come with any C41 kit will tell you it's generally good for about eight rolls of film, right? You, you use it, develop eight rolls of 35 millimeter film and it, it says basically it's exhausted enough to the point where you have to order more chemicals. I always get 24 rolls. I get three times as much and here's why. I never cross contaminate my chemicals. So I never go from a, de a, a developer dump to a Blix. Never do that. So what I do is I go, I go developer Fresh water rinse, I just rinse, I rinse, then I agitate, agitate with water, dump, and then I go to Blix. Because what that does is it prevents cross-contamination. You never put one chemical on top of the other chemical. There's always a water, there's always a water layer in between, in which it prevents the cross-contamination of chemicals, okay? So instead of getting eight rolls, I get 24. So I'm just saying that so that you extend the life of your chemicals longer. So again, so let's cover it again. I know I'm kind of repeating myself. This is supposed to be, if it's fresh, it's and it's C41. Now this doesn't apply to E6, and it doesn't apply to black and white. I'm, th these are different times, they're different temperatures. I'm just trying to cover here a basic overarching principle, okay? So if you're using C41, you bring the chemicals to 102 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's fresh, it's 330. At 310, at 310, you start dumping. It'll drain right at 330, and there's still chemical on the film. Fresh water for about 15 seconds. Fresh water, dump. Go to your Blix. And I use a funnel. I have a funnel that I use. Okay, and then I go to Blix. Blix is 6 minutes and 30 seconds. Same principle. Right at about 610, I start to pour. By the time it empties, it's 630. And then I go right then. Okay, when you're done with your Blix, you can expose your film to light. Okay, it's, it's developed enough to the point now where you can expose it to light. I do a warm water rinse. I do this. I go up and down like a plunger because I want water to come up and rinse the film. You're going to find that red blix is still all into the film. So what else I do is I spin. I spin. I plunge up and down. I'm plunging. 
and I'm getting all that blix off the film. Right? That's three minutes. Three minutes of warm water. It should be between approximately 95 and 105. Your 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 rinse your rinse temperature is between about 95 to 105 Fahrenheit for three minutes. When that's done, okay, you shake it, shake it real good, shake the film out, shake the water out. Then it's stabilizer. You put your stabilizer in, that can be at room temperature. Okay, room temperature stabilizer for one minute and you're doing this. You're, all you're doing is you're pouring enough in. You don't have to put it in any type of measurement thing. You can just eyeball it because remember your lid is off at this point. You're using stabilizer for one minute. Plunging, going like this. Then you pour, your pour, pour your stabilizer back into its bottle. And then finally what you do is you use a distilled water rinse. Okay, the last step is you put distilled water in here. Right, agitate, dump. Another batch of fresh water, uh, distilled. It has to be distilled because remember, distilled has no no chemicals in it. There's no minerals, there's no, right? Distilled is boiled water. The, the water is actually just pure, literally, hydrogen and oxygen, right? There's no uh, minerals that go along for the ride. And that's what makes your film absolutely beautiful and it's spot free. So when, you don't need a squeegee, you don't need any type of photo flow because that's what the distilled water does. The distilled water, it, it, every, any type of mineral or anything that's on the film, it'll, right, it'll rinse it off. So again, a second, a second, right, about 30 seconds, dump, and then your third and final distilled water bath, 30 seconds. So you have three 30 second baths for a total of a minute and a half, right? You're plunging, turning, 30 seconds, you dump, and here's what I do. Let me go get, I'm going to step out of frame for a second here. So let me get my... Let me get my stainless steel clips. Okay, so these are my stainless steel clips that I use to dry my negatives, right? And these are actually little fishing lures that I did, and I have some fishing line because you want a little bit of tension on your film. So here's what I do. Now you re you basically, you know, you you now it's different. So now you're taking the film off of the reel, and it's kind of the the different principle. Now you're applying different pressure to get it off the reel okay so now I have to back it out you remember it's gone through three distilled water baths and it takes a little bit you gotta just keep fooling with it <laughs> this thing is a monster to work with oh my god it is what it is, right? When in Rome, this is not like a Patterson tank. That is for sure. But again, it, it gets the job done, so that's why I don't complain. You know, like I say, when you got to kind of MacGyver things once in a while. And with this Yankee Clipper, believe me, you're doing a lot of MacGyvering. Okay, is it to the point where, I, yeah, it's to the point now where I can just pull it. Okay, now obviously in the real world, when you're really doing this, you'd never have the film come in contact with anything, right? Because then you'd pick up dust, right? So you're at the kitchen sink, and when you're when you're backing this out, don't let the film com come in contact with anything. Not the kitchen counter, nothing. Okay, and you'll see some, some people are using a squeegee, or they use their fingers, or an actual little squeegee. I would never do that. Please never, never have anything come in contact with the film like that, because you're gonna, you're going to introduce number one you're going to introduce dust into the film and you, you might take the chance of scratching it with the squeegee or even your fingers right so once you take it out I'll show you what I do so these are stainless steel clips right so what you do is you clip you can see here I'm opening it right you clip one end and then what I do is in the air I shake it all I'm doing is shaking it like this but I never let the tail I never shake it so violently that the tail can double back and scratch the film like this, right? So you don't want to be too violent with the shaking or the tail of the film will come back up and scratch the film. So I'm hanging it in the air like this and I'm just shaking it to dry. I hang this part, this part here, I'm in the bathroom, then I go to the bathroom and on the shower curtain, uh, uh, the rod, the shower curtain rod, there, I put a coat hanger. Right, and this attaches to the coat hanger. So now the gravity is taking over, right? And this is hanging. On the opposite end, I've, I have this fishing line, 
and I hook it with the other the other end okay so and I put this on the other end of the film and this is just a few ounces but it's enough not to stretch the film or anything but it's enough to aid gravity and keeping the film straight so that when the film dries it's drying nice and straight okay so let me show you again so this part is on the coat hanger the coat hanger is on the shower curtain it's hanging 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 and then you have your other stainless steel clip and a little tiny fishing lure and it's keeping it on there okay so you give it about an hour and a half or so this dries very quickly much much faster than 35 or a medium format okay so you give it about an hour hour and a half and it's going to be nice and dry and then you cut it cut it into I'm trying to remember if it's eight I think it's eight images but anyways you'll just have to write and it's kind of difficult it's really kind of difficult to explain but I cut them in in, in, in increments of eight so this is the start you, you count eight frames take your scissor snip eight frames take your scissor snip then then your final eight frames and snip so this is 24 okay it's a 24 exposure roll so you have three snips of uh, of eight and then what I do is I just scan them I just scan them on a, on a, a my Epson B600 flatbed scanner and basically that's where they become digital they become digital at that point I, I turn these into digital images after I scan them okay so that's about it again I didn't I didn't treat this A to Z and I didn't show you running the hot water and actually putting these in hot water because there's a million videos out there right now that show you how to do that I was just showing you things that are very specific to 110 and I hope I've set you up for success I hope you go ahead and attempt it and you're going to have a lot of fun and I, I love 110 110 is very campy right it's kitsch we all, we all know it's kitsch it was kitsch in the 70s and it's still kitsch today it's kind of like Lomo right Lomography is that the one brand of, of film that's a little more kitsch and camp than all the other ones. The other ones are serious photography and Lomo and this 110 is basically fun, camp, kitsch, whatever you want to call it. But I just love it. I love this 110 film. I love the vibe. I love the look it gets. So that's about it. I know I'm starting to ramble now and I want to finish this but uh, there you go. I wish you the best of luck and I hope to see your results on YouTube sometimes. Give me a holler. Let me know that you've uh, you've developed your own 110 and I'd love to see your results. And I promise my my comments will never be critical. I will never attempt to embarrass you. I would just, uh, I'd love to see your images. Okay, thank you.